Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Let me just do some quick adjustments. Make sure my audio is coming out. Happy Saturday. We have a jam packed informational session today. Make sure my audio is coming out. All right, we're good to go right here. All right. All right, let me just lower this volume. All right, let me just do a quick camera check here. Oh, got my laptop. All right, got the desktop view. All right, looks like we're good to go. We're gonna actually start pretty quick this morning. Uh, hello everybody, happy Saturday. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. Today, my goal for today is we're gonna dissect, okay? The Milwaukee Bucks logo, we're, we're gonna quickly dissect it and we're going to digitize it and we're going to embroider it, okay? Uh, of course, anytime we're talking about digitizing, a thousand different ways to go about doing so, okay? So I'm gonna kind of give you some, uh, some hints or like what's running through my mind when I'm digitizing, okay? Because every digitizer is gonna be different. Everybody's gonna have a different approach when it comes time for uh, digitizing. All right. Even if you don't digitize, right, it's always important to know the science behind it. That way, you know how to, when you do speak to a digitizer, okay, everybody's speaking the same language, uh, theory-wise, okay? So that way, if there's a certain look that you want to go with, okay, you can, you can communicate it with your digitizer. And also, you know uh, certain capabilities of what they can and they can't do. All right, so it's always good to uh, to learn, right, the basics. And we're gonna kind of go into the deep end too, okay? So today I'm gonna kind of use, uh, so I have the Wilcom 4.5 um, Designing Studio. Okay, we're gonna take it a little bit to the deep end. All right, so kind of follow along. Uh, if you do send out your files, most likely your digitizer probably has this program. So that way, right, you you, you know, uh, certain items that they can that they can and can't do. All right, so real quick, let's say some good mornings. So it looks like we're getting a uh, jam-packed house today. All right, all right. Good morning, Maisha. All right, appreciate that. Good way to start the morning. All right, and then we have Damien from the UK. So I'm pretty sure it's a little later over there. All right, it's morning time here, 8 a.m. Central, Northern Illinois. Let me know where you're uh, where you're watching from. Um, Linda Woods, good morning. All right, Barb, all right. Hello, Barb, happy Saturday. All right, right. Uh, Sohans Creations, good morning. Lejean, good morning. All right, should be, oh, all right. Uh, should be doing the Suns logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so one thing about logos, okay, I like, uh, to me, th that's like the gold standard is me going into lids, right? Going to the mall and looking at those logos. I like I like dissecting. I like analyzing. I like recreating uh, baseball logos, basketball logos, soccer logos, a lot of the European, uh, England type soccer logos. All right. Because if you recreate it, you could compare it to, you know, something that's uh, professionally made in the mall. Uh, you could see at what at what level. Also, when you're dissecting certain uh, logos, you could kind of see what the digitizer was thinking. All right, and they're on a commercial level, so they're trying to save time. They're trying to save cuts and stitches, so you would see little small shortcuts that they take. Also, all right. Uh, so I always like to recreate logos, right, just for fun. Uh, today's training, okay. Um, Today's logo is for educational purpose only, all right? So, of course, we're not going to try to go out there and write slang uh, Milwaukee Bucks uh, logos and all that, all right? This is all personal use, all right? So I encourage you, uh, anytime you get a break, anytime you have time, off time, okay? That This is the equivalent to us shooting free throws, right? This is like Kobe, right, when he had to stay back at the gym, right? This is us shooting free throws. Uh, becoming better. Okay. So creating logos on personal projects, give yourself personal projects. 
and you're going to see your digitizing skills, all right, just kind of go through the roof. All right. Um, good morning, Janet. All right. So we got, all right, all right. Good morning, Marlene. All right. So. Uh, Janet, good morning. Good morning, Juana. All right, from Maryland. All right, all right, all right. So good morning, Aldell, Marissa, Janice from South Carolina. All right, all right. So let's get this party started. Okay, a uh, very busy day today. So let's go on the desktop here. All right, let me see. Let me turn on this. All right. So today we are going to digitize. Let me see if I have to turn on this light right here. Uh, we're going to digitize the Milwaukee Bucks logo. Um, so I, I'm actually about 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, it's a little better. Uh, I'm about 45 minutes away from Milwaukee. So I, I have had a chance to go check out a game. And it, it was actually against the Lakers back in November. All right, so it was a real good game. Okay. Uh, so you'll see this logo, right? Everywhere you go, Milwaukee, right? It looks very, very good, right? Very nice logo. And as when you see it, right? When we look at it, uh, this is what the consumer sees, right? They just see the logo as a whole, but us as digitizers, we got to cut it up into pieces. Okay. All right, so when we do cut it up, Okay, when we when we put on our uh, our digitizing brain, all right, and this is how we go about and see this logo, right? Right. So we turn. This is what the consumer sees, and this is what we see here, right? We're chopping up our we're chopping up our logo into pieces, right? So this is how I go about and how I see this logo. And this also has to do with a lot of animals. Anytime you're working with animals, uh, you're breaking it up into pieces. Of course, we can go the easy route and just do one fill stitch, right, all the way through. But it, it, it adds character when you chop it up, okay, into pieces. And you make it look into more, uh, you're giving it more of a 3D type look. Okay, uh, so today's today's digitizing, we're gonna we're going to do everything with sand stitches. All right, everything's gonna be done with sand stitches. Uh, if you're starting out, worst case scenario, you can always go with fill stitches, right? Easy day if you're going fill stitches, but we're, with this deer, okay, we're going uh, sand stitches. All right, so let's go ahead. So the plan for today, let me go over the plan for today. So my plan, okay. So let me kind of rewind a little bit, right? Let me rewind a tad bit. Uh, when we talk about digitizing, we're dealing with three important decisions, all right? When digitizing. When digitizing, okay? We got to come up with three important questions, all right? Even if you send out your, your files to get digitized, you still have to provide this information to your... Uh, to your digitizer, all right? So first one, right? See what I put, yeah. Okay, so this this is more for the digitizer, okay? So for the digitizer, when digitizing, we have to trace, right? We have to trace. So as you can see, I broke up our logo into different pieces. These are different shapes, right? These are going to be different shapes that I'm cutting up our piece to, right? These are two pieces here. All right, so we're we have to trace, and when we trace, we create objects. So anytime today, I'm gonna use the word objects a lot. If I say, "Hey, I have to do this to this object," I'm talking about an item that I traced. Okay, that that is now a shape. So I'm turning uh, our tracing is going to turn into shapes. All right, and the more symmetrical, the the, the nicer. And the cleaner it looks. Also, the less the less nodes and the less clicks, okay, the cleaner 
our design looks. Okay, so these dots that I'm making, these represent clicks that I'm making. Okay, these are all clicks. The, the lowest amount of clicks is what we're striving for. All right, all right, number two, let me see. What did I write right here? Yeah. Okay, when we're digitizing, okay, we're going to have to set stitch angles. Okay, stitch angles, of course. So after after we trace it, we have to tell, we have to tell our file at what angle we want our stitches to be at. Okay. For example, here, the antlers, right? It's obvious this middle stitch, we want it to be perfect 90 degrees. And we slowly, right? We slowly want to curve our way to the tip. All right, so when we are creating this, okay, today I'm going to shape it like this, all right? And when we're talking about these three items that I'm talking about right now, okay, these are all decisions that you have to make, all right, or your digitizer has to make. So if you don't give your digitizer this information, they have to, they have to come up with this decision, all right? And a lot of times they know what to decide, all right, because they've done it so many times so for so long that a lot of the decisions is just second nature. But as we're going to talk about today, sometimes you want to override certain decisions, all right? All right, and then number three, okay, when digitizing, okay, we have to set our sequence, all right, meaning in what order. And what order is going to go what? Okay, what's going first? What's going to get stitched? For example, here, okay, the nose, do you want the nose to go first or you want it to go last on top of the face, right? So those are decisions. And a lot of times these decisions uh, are based off how many cuts do you want, all right? So, okay, here the chest, right? Uh, also today, I don't know the the all the body parts, right? The the specific names of the of the deer. Okay, so if I call something just by a generic name, okay, I know there are proper names for each thing. Okay, but if I don't, if I just call it like the chest here, okay, I'm just referring to the chest part here. All right. If I call this the ear, all right, I don't know if there's a proper word to call the ear, all right, but I know it by by as an ear. Okay. All right, um, so today, okay, I just want to give you an overview, right? So this is my, these are what I'm looking out for here, okay? I'm looking out for trace, right? Step number one is trace, stitch angles, at what angles? And this this one here, sequence, all right, is very, I, I would say this is kind of like the the more difficult part, okay? Tracing. I would say with practice, it kind of comes naturally. It, it eventually becomes natural, like a natural, um, right, uh, task to do. The more you, the more practice you get. Also with stitch angles, uh, sequence. This is what really makes or breaks a project because this deals with uh, your cuts, and uh, this deals with your cuts. This deals with uh, what goes what. What objects goes on top of which objects? Okay, so this is where more thinking is involved. Okay, so I kind of left it for number three. Now these three, these three items, they're not in no specific order, all right. But for the most part, okay, you're kind of thinking of tracing and sequencing hand to hand. That way, in the back end, it's less it's less work on the back end. All right. All right. So let's get another sheet. So here today, okay, as you can see, uh, this is kind of like an overview of how I'm going to trace our item. Uh, here uh, on the antlers is a big decision, like which antler goes on top of which antler, all right? I know here, Northern Illinois, there's a lot of deer experts, okay? They probably know what should be on top of what, right? Um, but for the most part, this front part from tip all the way to here, I'm going to make that our front row, okay? So it's going to go here, 
all the way to here. Okay, so that's gonna be one long one. Same thing here. All right, so this front one is gonna be the main one that's gonna face forward. Okay, and then these other ones, all right, are gonna be behind it, all right? And once we trace it, we have to, we have to tell the software at what angle do you want your stitches to go, all right? So uh, sand stitches, are a lot of it is straightforward, right? You kind of you kind of have an idea of how the stitches should look, all right. And then same thing here. So we know this one should be right behind it, coming in at second, and then these should be right behind these, all right. So if you draw a picture, I like to I like to trace my drawing, put it in Illustrator, and make a and make a sample like this, especially the more complicated designs. because I like to map it out before I actually go into the digitizing software. All right, so right now I'm just drawing an overview of my game plan, okay? Um, how I'm gonna go about. See, as you see right here, this is where I wanna make sure my sand stitches are starting to turn, okay? Just so all these stitches blend in and I don't have any, uh, stitches pulling too hard here you got to make a decision which antler goes on top of which one okay so i'll put this front one okay i'll put this one maybe this back one should have been okay but for right now i could just keep it like this just to make this one go solid all the way through all right now here that's for the antlers right here on the body okay and for the for the face and chest, I would want this to get stitched out first, right? So of course I'm going to create this. And same thing, you want to you want to know at what angle you want these stitches to be at. Okay, same thing here. So this is a good blend with the chest. Okay, you see? Yep. Right. This piece, I'm going to make it one solid piece. And since the nose, the details of the nose, all right, is fairly small, I don't really have to cut up. I could just go straight on the white portion. And in my eyes, okay, sand stitches going down like that. My ears, chop them up right here. Actually, the face, right? And then just sand stitch this all the way through. All right. I know if I use different colors, you probably would have seen it, but I think it makes sense. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty clear. All right, so all these lines represent sand stitches. Okay, and then here, all right. And I'm gonna show you some pretty cool tools that uh, the Wilcom has that makes life a whole lot easy. All right, so this is the game plan here, okay? so. Our game plan, what I talked about, we're going to trace it, we're going to set our stitch angles, and then we're going to sequence it. What goes first? So my goal, okay, my goal here, uh, one, uh, four cuts, okay, four, four total cuts. All right, I'm always thinking production mode, uh, two things that I'm thinking when I'm digitizing is production mode, the least amount of cuts. And the reason why I like the least amount of cuts is because that's when something usually goes wrong. When you cut it and then you have to tie off uh, or tie in, tie off, tie in uh, again, usually stuff happens during that time. When something's stitching straight, uh, usually uh, errors are less prone to happen. Okay, so four cuts and um, bam, bam. Okay, so that's that's my goal, all right? Uh, and by default, I like to I like to digitize uh, with the hat rule, which is bottom up, bottom up, center out. Okay, uh, I like that because I think it also works on polo shirts. 
the hat rule, you know, you always hear uh, digitize from bottom up, center out. Uh, it works for hats. And it also, I, I see that it tends to work for polos too. Uh, it, it minimizes the chance for puckering on polo shirts too. So I just, by default, I like that. All right. All right. And then one last thing. I got another one here. Okay. Uh, I am going to start off with a under, uh, with a global underlay. Okay. Global underlay. And these, and this is what a global underlay is. I'm going to set down some stitches. So usually I start here on the side and I just lay down some stitches, some running stitches, kind of like in a zigzag just to lay down, right? Just to lay down our, 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 uh, our stitches so our fabric and our stabilizer could kind of combine together just so it prevents prevents our stitches from opening up okay so this is um global underlay okay global that would be step number one all right uh i like to go over kind of like the game plan first that way once i get into digitizing i could kind of start working a little quick Right. And I've already explained kind of what I'm doing. Right. Um, all right. Global underlay. All right. So I think we're good to go. All right. Oh. Um, all right. Let me hit this light. All right. If you have any questions today, make sure you put a cue here. Uh, I'm going to be focused on the software a lot, so I will get back. We are going to, we are going to, we are going to stitch out what we, what we digitize here. Okay. I think in order to get the full training, the full grasp of digitizing embroidery, uh, you have to see, right. You have to see both the digitizing and the actual stitch out. Okay. Or else you only kind of learn half of it. All right, so I think it's very important to do that. All right, uh, all right. So we got a lot of good mornings. Good morning, everybody. All right. Uh, Bill Gates, Romero, you should look into teach classes at Everything Embroidery Market. I'm here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and you would be great asked to the class. All right. Yeah, maybe something. Uh, I, I I don't think I've heard about that one, Embroidery Market. All right. All right, but. Right. Uh, so let's go here to the software. All right. Turn this on. Yep. All right. So first, first thing we're going to do. So I got a blank sheet, right? I got a blank sheet right here. And I got my, let's see, uh, pretty big size. All right file so i'm going to place it in all right so i got my logo here and when i click on it you can see the size uh height 13 inches so it's very very big design right now one thing that i like to do just go to options real quick uh let me just take out this grid for right now just so you can see this logo hold on what happened? All right, go to grid guidelines off, show grid off. All oh, right here. All right, what I like to do, uh, I'm going to digitize the deer, all right, right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to clean up our graphics. So what you can do, crop bitmap, any shape, okay? And you're just gonna uh, create a border, just a cut border. Okay, so go here. Okay, it's just real quick. It don't have to be perfect, just enough to uh, take away uh, whatever you don't need. And that way it'll help you on your sizing too. All right, so right now we're just going to trace the outside of this. I might zone out for a bit, like if I'm kind of quiet, it's just kind of thinking, 
Because usually when with digitizing, you got to use like every corner of your brain. Oh, wait, going the wrong way. So I'm just going to cut the logo right now, OK? Just to include what I need. Okay, so I cut this and then I'm just gonna go to graphics and finalize crop. All right. Now I can size it. So I go to size. So right now it's at 11 inches. I'm gonna make it three inches. All right. I like to work with uh, designs I like to work with uh, anywhere from 2.5, three, four inches. That's like my sweet spot. Because that's hat friendly, that's um, polo friendly. All right, uh, let me bring back the grids in pork. Um, grid, show grid, tool tool. Okay. All right, now we are at three inches, our design. Okay, so we're going to go make sure we're centered. Okay, so I'm going to center our design, especially for. Um, for symmetrical items, you always want your, your design to be centered. Okay, there's gonna be some shortcuts we might be able to use. Okay, we're gonna lock it down here and we're going to dim it, dim artwork. Okay, now we are ready to go, okay? We are ready to go. So what I'm gonna do first, even though it's gonna stitch last, all right? So uh, the antlers, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, digitize that first. Okay, I want to start off with showing you um, a pretty cool tool that we have here on Wilcom. Uh, complex turning, okay? So I'm pretty much going to be using this complex turning for today's exercise, okay? For mo for maybe 90% of all of our uh, shapes, okay? So when I'm tracing, okay, this one here is my go-to complex turning. Uh, it does a lot of thinking, okay? It does a lot of thinking for you okay so there's a difference between uh auto digitizing which just kind of does all the thinking for you right you do zero percent thinking when you auto digitize but then there's some stuff where if you do 90 percent of the thinking and use the 10 percent of the software to to do the thinking okay uh you can you can do some pretty uh neat stuff and you could save a lot of time, all right? So I'm gonna show you with that uh, turning. So I'm gonna use the complex turning, okay? So what we wanna do first, okay, what we wanna do first is we're going to, this is gonna be the backside of our antlers, right? This is gonna be kind of in the back. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to trace and I'm gonna trace them as a whole. All right, so here, Mm, I could go here. And I'll show you what this does. All right, so I like to put the least stitches possible. All right, now once you're good, two, three. And then it's going to down here below, it's asking me, uh, telling me to input information. It's telling me to enter angle points. Okay, so this is where, so I stitched our file. I, I mean, I stitched our uh, design. I mean, I traced the design. And now it's asking me to put stitch angles. Okay, so everywhere you want a stitch angle to be at a certain place, right? We want this to come in. Kind of right here, and then, all right, all right. So it gives you this, right? So it gives you something that's not so pretty, okay? But what you can do, right? You select this, okay, and then you go to uh, automatic knife, okay, and now it cleans it up for you. All right. So there was some automatic uh, settings used here, right? But 
you've done a lot of the thinking for it. And what it does, it cuts it up nice and pretty for you. All right. So here, actually, let me go back. I'm going to delete this because I'm going to have this antler come in on its own. All right. So this one wasn't necessary to include in that one. All right. So let's go ahead and. I'll start this one from right here. So it's actually these two antlers. All right. And the good the good thing about this, since our antlers are symmetric, once I do one side, I'm just copying and pasting the other side. Two, three. Bam. And then you want to anticipate how the angles should 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 look when you throw the ang stitch angles. All right, so here, okay, it looks doesn't look so good here. So I'm gonna put the automatic knife. All right, now it cleans it up. Bam, bam, bam. All right, and then if you want to change some of the the angles, you could just put stitch angles. All right, I'm gonna delete this one. All right. All right, we're looking good here. Okay, uh, all of our start and stop, we'll take care of all that afterwards. All right, so let me go ahead. Let me take care of uh, this one here. This one is a antler just by itself, so it doesn't require too much um, thinking on this part. Okay, I just have the angle slightly turning. Okay, so bam, right there. Okay, bam, bam. Um, I'm going to make this one here. All right, let me make this long one, the one that's gonna be front and centered. Okay, so since I have my design centered here, okay, I just use this as a base. I'm gonna go straight right above the eyes. Now I start turning, okay. So I'm gonna start putting curves here. All right, corner here, and then we'll talk about corners, uh, what you wanna look out for if you're uh, clicking corners like that, something to look out for. Okay, so then I'm gonna connect up here. Right here, we're still turning, right? We're like, we have a bend going on. I'm going to take it all the way up here. So same thing here. Connect here. And I just want to have a natural curve. So I want to have the least amount of clicks as possible. All right. Now we're taking it all the way back down. Uh, Yep, bam. All right. So I just created the shape here. Click, click, and then enter angle point, right? So I want my angles to end like this. And of course, I want this one to be 90 degrees, just like we planned it. Okay, and then just give it a couple angles here. You kind of want to tell the, the, the software where you want your stitches to start making that turn. Okay, then it should be right here. All right, so here, this front antler, all right, looking nice and sharp. Okay, looking clean. Bam, bam. Right, now we gotta take care of this one that's right behind it and this one here. Okay, so to do that, let's go ahead and let's create this first one here. 
So this one, I see it uh, below. Bam, bam, bam. All right, that's here. Then right above that one, we're gonna draw this one here. And then if you if you make a mistake, just backspace. All right. Um, this is like the tedious part, the antlers, okay? Because the body is pretty straightforward. But if you make this antler stand out, all right, this is it's gonna really make the whole project look good. Two, three, and then put our angles. Bam, bam. All right, so we have this here, here. All right, now, if you want to, okay, if you don't want this uh, this antler here, this part, this one, to go over this uh, sand stitch as a full, you could select both and flatten. Okay, so let's look for flatten. All right, and then what that did that cut up our pieces. So what I could do is uh, hide others. Okay, what that did, it, it cut up our pieces into two, or the bottom piece into two. All right, and then let me see. Yeah, so that gives it a uh, different angle. That hiding? Oh yeah, that's hiding, all right. Uh, unhide. All right, that just allows uh, these stitches to be a little smaller and kind of blend in a little bit better with the top one. Okay, so instead of having big stitches on top of big stitches. Okay, all right, let's unhide all, unhide all. All right, let's see how we look. All right, so we have the whole left side ready to go. All right, ready to go. Okay, of course, this this piece is going to go all the way forward. All right, so now this is so we did three things, right? We did uh, we did. Uh, let me move myself to the left. Actually, I could put myself to the bottom right. Oh, um. all right. We did um, three things. We traced it, okay, we traced it. We set our angles, and now we wanna set our sequence, okay? What's gonna go first, what's gonna go second? All right, so now this is this is what I think is where the brain has to work a little harder, right? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna run run stitch, I'm gonna do some run stitches. Uh, I'm gonna start here, make my way. Uh, I know I want this one to be first, this antler, okay. Um, and then from, I'm gonna go here, 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 okay. So I don't need run stitches too many and then bam. Okay, so the way you go about selecting these, I'm gonna get my run stitch first. And put this one. I want this stitch second, so I'm gonna push control, hold on to that. I want that one second. I want this one third. And then fourth. Ah. All right, took it out of order, but you could use the sequence. Okay, so it kind of took it out of sequence, but one. So let's try that again. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Put that as a sequence. All right, we still gotta we still gotta tighten up some stuff. Okay. And what I'm going to do is right click, apply closest joint. Okay, let's go information, trims. Okay, so I should only have one trim. So one of them is unnecessary right now. All right, but I could catch that on the back end. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and copy and paste these. So I'm going one, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so I'm going to select the ones that mirror. Okay, that mirror this side. Control D for duplicate. Okay, so now it's, there's two items on top of each other. I'm going to mirror it. And I'm going to change the X to a positive. So instead of 0. 0.578, just instead of a negative, just a positive. Bam. All right, and put this guy below. All right, and then once again, apply closest joint, okay. All right, so there we go with our antlers, okay. This is not the final one. Uh, I do the final, make sure that we don't have any, because right now it has four trims. We should only have one trim right now, All right, but we do a quick replay right now. All right, so you're just making sure that all your angles are good. That's where the unnecessary cut was at. Um, so it's making that under part, and now it's gonna create this, the long stitch, it's gonna go up here. This is where you would run a run stitch to go on the other side. All right, and then bam. All right, so we got that. Let's unhide all. Or... All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, okay, while we do the body. So hide these, okay. Uh, let me see if you have any, if there's any questions. Oh, bam, bam, good morning. So we have more people coming in. All right, Barb said, I like the fact you showed how to make the game plan on paper before going into stuff. It gives a better feel of how to digit. Yeah, so that way you kind of know when I'm kind of going fast, you kind of know what, what what I'm thinking about and what I'm doing, kind of following along. Okay, even ev e I even do that uh, just normal. Like I have an idea. That way I save it in the file. I keep a file with each, with each, with each project, each customer. I'll save their their project file how I came about doing that file, just if just in case I ever have to go back and see why I did something. Okay, um, appreciate that, Lejean. Reminder: Yes, let YouTube know that we are in the house. We are all about embroidery. We are learning. Okay. Good morning, Jelaine. All right. Oh, bye bye. Uh. All right, so I think we're good right now. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do this, the 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 body portion. Okay, so I'm gonna start here with the white part of the deer. Okay, so I'll start with this chest part. Okay, uh, this here, very useful complex tool. Okay, now let's say you don't have these specific tools, right? It's not the end of the world. You're just manually creating these, um, these stitches, all right? And I'll tell you what I'm talking about, all right? So here we're just going corner to corner, and then it should be a straight two, three, angle, angle, and down below, I want a zero degree angle. Okay. And let's change it to white. Well, I'll do it black right now just so you can see it, so you can have a good view. All right, let's talk about uh, corners, all right, corners here. So as you see, when I when I did when I digitized it, I went straight corners. And when you when you stitch it out, it's not going to do an actual corner of a stitch, right? The, let me put the dots. These dots right here, these signify 
uh, each where the needle is going through. So if you see the distance, well, let me go millimeters, from corner to corner, okay. We're at about 0.36 and once I add pool compensation, all right, we'll be above the 0.4. So I usually say that you never wanna do a, a, a sand stitch less than 0.4. So we're gonna be good with sand stitches. So even though I did put a corner, we're not gonna go down to zero millimeters at that corner. So the, the software, it's intelligent enough to know, hey, don't, don't put an exact corner here, actually make it into a stitch. All right, so sometimes you just gotta verify and make sure, right? That's why you wanna set that angle so it could come out flat here, okay? Uh, some people just manually click in their, uh, their corners. Okay, but for the most part, the software does a pretty good job of uh, making it above a 0.4, especially with the pool compensation. And then here, right, it broke it broke these up. So it makes the long stitch and then it does each one of these corners separately. All right, so that's, that's where the software, okay, that's where you're getting your money's worth from your software when it does stuff like this. Okay, where I just have to digit, where I just have to, uh, create the shape and then put the angles and then it does something like this. All right. But you just want to make sure these these angles. OK, they're good to go. All right. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead to this nose part. And once again, I'm just tracing. OK, the more you trace, the better you become. Right. Just like with everything in life. This bottom part of the nose, uh, the mouth. Yeah, I think it's the mouth. I'm gonna take it down a little bit just so it could stand out a little. If not, it might get lost with some stitches, so. Make sure this is a straight. So right here, if you read down below, it says enter point one on boundary two. That's only if you have a, a hole here, we do have a hole, but I'm not going to include this hole because this part of the design is so small where it's not really necessary to, to create a, a gap or a hole here. All right. It's not going to make or break the design. So we're good. So you push enter again, and then it puts entry point. We're not worried about the entry point because we're going to do that afterwards. Okay. Now it's telling you to put your stitch angle. Okay. And we're going to go zero degrees all the way through. All right, so make this white, okay, or black. All right, so we're gonna put that, the nose right under, and then right above that, we'll put the details of the nose. But right now we're just doing the white portion. Okay, so let's go ahead. This is just tracing now. Uh, we can leave the eyes for later. All right, uh, let's go ahead and actually, Let's go ahead and start running these run lines because I'm going to do this bottom part first. I want a run stitch to come from here. Okay, right here. Make this black. Okay, so I'm going to start doing my run lines now. That way I don't have to do it at the very end. Okay, and then from here, make another run line. I'm going to run across to my ears. Then let me create this ear here. 39, all right. I think my uh, GoPro is about to die, so battery is about to die. I got my backup. I got my phone right here. All right, uh, let me just do this ear real quick. All right, trace this ear, okay? So as you can see, it's not, it's not a fully straight line. So we put a curve right here in the middle and then a pivot. So now we got that perfect curve. Okay, slight curve, right? And then curve, curve, curve. These are all just, and then here is like a straight line. Two, three, put our, all right. All right, let me, let me kind of shift off. About to turn off my GoPro. 
Uh, let me see if. Uh, all right, we'll keep it like this for right now. To my to I change the battery on my GoPro. All right, let me just keep on. Uh, Okay, so real quick, we're going from chest, run stitch to the nose, run stitch to the ear. Now let's go to the other ear. Okay, so bam, it's gonna complete it. We could end it here at the at the middle part. Okay, bam. All right, then F2 is the hot key there. Black. Same thing here. So you could actually just duplicate it also here. So control D to duplicate mirror. And then we're gonna put it negative X here, negative X. All right, and then just see if you have to line it up. No, it looks pretty good. Probably move it a little bit to the, all right. Good there. All right, so, okay, so chest, we're gonna walk, nose, we're gonna walk, ear, then we walk to the next ear, and then we're good there, because we're gonna leave this white, the eyes for last. Okay, so now, let's hide this. Hide. Okay, now let's do the bottom, the shoulders. Okay, so one thing about this logo, you can see the M, right? You can see the shoulders and the chest make up an M for Milwaukee. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I like the, uh, the sharp corners, right? So we want to make sure our stitches remain sharp and you can see that M. Okay. Uh, and then here, the antlers, you can see it's like in the shape of a basketball. Okay. So that's pretty cool right there. All right, this is a good question here. Can you explain the purpose of the run line? Okay, uh, let's bring these back here. So when you're digitizing, uh, you want to you want to take into consideration you don't want unnecessary cuts. Okay, so once we start this needle running, we don't want it to cut. Okay, so by me doing a run stitch, so right now, okay, all these triangles, these are cuts. Okay, that's because I haven't pushed a very important button. But by me creating these run stitches, I don't have to cut. I'm going to walk to the next object, okay? So that just prevents unnecessary cuts. So here, I'm going to put apply closest joint, okay? It removes all those cuts. So after it completes this bottom part, it's gonna walk to the other one create this and then it's going to walk to the next one okay so it's you it's just you're creating a path so it can move on to the next one all right all right very good question right there all right thank you very much Siddhar. appreciate that all right uh good morning shrimpy all right thank you for the great guides you're the best all right appreciate that all right yeah i think this one today all right i think this one today's Okay, now we're slowly, right? This is, uh, I think it's, um, what week are we in? I just wrote it down somewhere. I think we're like in week 17 or week 18, one of those. Yeah, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. Week 18. We're in week 18. So I think now, right, we're starting to get into like the deeper side of embroidery. Okay, which is kind of like the fun stuff, All right? Which is real cool. All right, all right. Let's go back here. Um, mm, where was that? Okay, so I'm gonna do the M, right? The M part. I'm gonna chop it up just like I talked about it in the beginning of our game plan. So let me hide this, just so you can kind of see what's happening. Hide. All right. I'm going to, so here, this shape, one, two, three, four, five, six clicks. 
right? There should only be six clicks. So we're all about least amount of clicks possible. Okay, and then I'm kind of just zooming in and out. All right, hopefully it doesn't give anybody any headaches. All right, one, two, three, and then I want the angles to come from here and I want it to end right here. Bam, right there, all right? So it's looking nice and sharp, like that green. And then I'm going to walk myself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have it end here. Okay, you could tell the, the, the software, right? You don't have to go from corner to corner from beginning to end. Okay, you could end it somewhere here in the middle, which I prefer to end sand stitches somewhere in the middle. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk up to the nose and then create this nose. All right. Bam, we got a little curve here, curve here. Bam, one, two, three. Let's put our, let's make it a little long here. Okay, these are all decisions that you're doing on the fly is the angles, all right? But the more you practice, the more of a judgment call you have and the more confidence you have with your judgment calls. All right. All right, so we're, we we walked over here, we did this part of the nose. Now let's do the, like the, the lip part. Okay, so we're just gonna go take it here. That's just a straight line here. Here. One, two, three. Oh, I did the angles for me. All right, that's fine. All right. And then let's walk again. We're gonna go for another walk here. Ah, oh, gotta change the color. All right, now we're gonna do this part, the right shoulder. And we already did this shoulder. So all we gotta do is duplicate, mirror, negative sign, turn it into a positive. Bam, it's right there. Just make sure it lined up. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, bam, bam. And one thing that I kind of haven't talked about was the push-pull compensation. And as you can see here, right, there's a lot of objects pulling each other, uh, pulling itself from each other, a lot of moving pieces. So you definitely want to take that into consideration. For right now, I'm not uh, overcompensating any of our designs. And you're going to see what I'm going to do at the end to make to make sure all of our designs overlap. Okay. All right. Now let's create. Okay. So we created our shoulder. Now we're going to walk over here to the ear. Okay. Because I want this face to be the last thing that stitches. All right. So I got to create the ears. Okay. And there's actually um, something cool here. So here I could just create the ears. So you kind of got to remember how we drew our um, stitches here, how we cut it up. Okay. What you can do is unhide all, unhide all and remove these stitches just so you could see the, the shapes. All right. That way you could see how you want your ear to come about. All right. So start my ear. I want it to come right here. We're just going to trace this ear. And actually, there's like a three step process on this one. All right. So we want to bring it in here. Does like a slight curve. Bam. Oh. Yeah, we could go like this. So it's telling me enter point one on boundary two. That means, do you want to make a hole? Okay, we definitely want to make a hole here. Okay, we want to just outline our ear. So this is where you have to uh, create a, a hole 
for that stitch. So it created that hole. Now it says, do you want to make another hole? We're good. Okay, so we push enter again. Press enter uh, entry point, which we're not worried about that right now. Enter angle one. So, okay, so here, I want to make this angle here. I want to make this angle right here. I want to make this angle right here. And here, to, right, we can make it like this, okay. Oh, all right, let's see, uh, green. All right, uh, here, we can use that nice tool right here, this um, automatic knife, where it's gonna, it's gonna make our corners look a little nicer, okay. So, bam, right here. Okay, so it cut up our uh, pieces right here. Okay. Which, yeah, so this one's going to end like this. Go over here. So that's fine. I like that. Okay. Um, and now, let's go ahead. We're going to walk to the next ear. And walk here. And we're going to duplicate this right here, reflect, and put a negative sign so it could move to the left side. All right. Bam. So we did that. And now we're going to do the face part. All right, now that we did this, just create the shape of our face. All right, and then I think that's it. After that face, then we do the eyes, and we're good to go. Then we got to talk about all the details, right? Because there might be a lot of cuts. So here, it's going right above the where the antlers is. You can see like the shape of the antlers. So I'm using that as a guide. Then I'm gonna use this. And right now I'm not I'm not thinking about pool compensation because I'm going to take care of that at the very end. Okay, I'm going to take this just right below it. Let's see. All right. Oh. So I'm just creating the shape for the face. These are our curves right here. Uh, should have been straight. I'll fix that nose in a bit. Ah, oh, hold on. I finished it too early. Hold on. I got to select that. All right, hold on. Let me do it again. I push enter too, too early. All right, let's try that again. So we're going with complex turning. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's start in this corner. So this is the face part of the deer. This is, I think this is this and the antler, that main, that, that main antler that's moving, that's on the front. I think those are the most important stitches that's going to make or break this project. And we got to measure and see how big these uh, these sand stitches are because they look like they're pretty big here. Okay, but we're working at a three uh, three inch height design, so we should we should be all right. I didn't need that curve right there. So anytime you, you you did a little minor mistake, you could just push back backspace, push you back on track. All right, bam, right there. Okay, so this is my shape here. I I want my angles to run at this angle right here. So I'm gonna. Make this go like this. Oh, I didn't need this one. Hold on. Hopefully it doesn't mess up my hole. 
Okay. All right, now enter angles. Go right here, we need a 90 degrees, right here. All right. All right, it's, it's, it just looks a little weird because it's uh, out of sequence. All right, you could just check your angles by pushing H. Okay, you kind of you could kind of see how you want your angles to be. You can kind of tell if something's kind of off. All right. Um, actually, let me add an angle because it's coming in weird right here. I still want it. To... Then, uh, bam, bam. Let's make this right here. All right. Bam, yep, it's looking good. All right, now sequence, right? Let's put our sequence. Well, let's just finish it with the eyes, right? These eyes look pretty crazy right here. So we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna go straight line here, right? Give it that mean look. All right, I'm gonna copy this, duplicate, mirror, and take away this minus, put it here. Just line it up, make sure it's cool. All right, let's see. Now, okay, we did all the tracing part. Okay, we did the tracing. As you can tell here, sequencing time, right? Because it's it looks like it's all out of order. Okay, so we know we know we want to do on this part. We want to do this part first: running stitch, nose, mouth, running stitch. Uh, should I had a running stitch? No. Oh, we didn't do a running stitch here. Okay, so at 25.5, I need a running stitch. Wait, I should have one. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, so we're good. 25 and then shoulder and then All right, I need one at here. 26.5, I need a running stitch to go to my ear. So we could do it here. All right, shoulder, running stitch, ear, right ear. Running stitch, another ear, face, and then we go with antlers. So that go down, bam. Eyes is the last thing. All right, so after here, I have a walkie stitch right here. Bam, all right. So let's see how it looks. We can make this white. We can make this black white. And then the eyes white. All right, so now it's looking all right. So right here, if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at, let me pull up my screen bigger. All right, if you're looking on the right-hand side, okay, it says trims 16, right? So you already know we're not about that trim life. We don't like trims. Well, I don't like trims. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't like trims, especially when it's unnecessary. All right. So since I already sequenced everything, I did my run lines as I was supposed to. If everything goes well, 
I should be able to minimize all these. Okay, so by selecting all the green, right, from beginning to end, uh, right click, apply closest joint. Okay, so dropped it down to seven trims. Okay, and then here, let me just play apply closest joint again. So that one was ready to go. Okay, so I think I have three trims that's unnecessary right now. So we got to find them. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I know where they're at. They're at the antlers. All right. Uh, oh, that's right, because we didn't finish the antler part in the beginning. Okay, so let's see. So our goal is to bring down this trim. Like, it doesn't seem much, right? Like, um, we want to go with four and we have seven. Okay. But if you're running like um, 50, 60 of these uh, designs, uh, the possibility of something happening during those times increases. All right, uh, let's see, we got here. We walk up here. Okay, we come up here, I'm just looking for that. Okay, and then All right, so we got to walk our way up here. Okay. Should have a start point. H. All right, I see what happened. Put this guy down here. And H. I'll start up here. And H, so at 22, 22.5, let's put a running stitch right here, bam. Okay, 22.5. Okay, that brought it down to six. Then we got, and it goes here, and then it goes this big one. Then it goes over here. So we definitely need a walk stitch here, or run stitch, however you want to call it. Uh, let's put this stop sign here. Let's walk it up here. Okay, so that was... Twenty-six point five. All right. This uh, this is the the tedious part right here, All right? Because this is the sequencing. I'm gonna start right here. Removes that one. Okay. We're down to five. Okay. And then I think I have one more that's unnecessary up here. Oh yeah. Okay, H. We don't want to end up here. We want to end down here. Then we want to walk our way. H. We want to start right here. O. Create a walk stitch from here. All right, uh, 30.5 or 29.5. All right, let's see. Yep. All right, we're down to four trims. Bam. All right, let me see if that's cool. Because, so it's four trims because it's the, the bottom, the body. And the antlers, that's all in one cut. So that's cut number one. Then we have the the chest, nose, ears. That's two cuts. Left eye, three. And then right eye, four. All right. So we're doing all that with four cuts. All right. So that's what it's showing right there. All right. 
All right. Uh, appreciate that, Sidar. Thank you for your dedication to teach. God bless. Yep, yep. Uh, so to me, this is just fun, right? This is the best way to spend a uh, Saturday morning. All right. It's just talking about embroidery, doing embroidery, because no matter what, whether I was doing it live or just on my own, I would definitely be doing uh, embroidery. All right. So the best way to do it is just go live and kind of show you uh, what's running through my brain. Right. Because a lot of this stuff, I'm kind of doing it on the fly also. Right. Some stuff I do plan. But of course, anything that we plan, right, stuff changes. Um, stuff doesn't work the way we think it should work. All right. And we're always thinking on the on the fly. OK. Uh, so appreciate that. All right. Jelaine, appreciate that. OK. Uh, let's see. Uh, so run lines don't have to be placed at the beginning and end of each section. Can you just put it anywhere in? Uh, yeah, you can move them around. So let's say you forgot to put them somewhere. You could always go back and include. And yes. So now I understand your question. They don't have to be at the corners of your of your uh, of your design. Uh, they can be in between places. So yes. So when I did that uh, apply closest joint, the the computer, right? The, the I mean the software is going to use this is brain power and find what is the most efficient way. So you already did half of the thinking, as in introducing the run stitch, and then the software is going to do its part and figure out what is the most efficient way to do it. All right. So it's like you and the software is working together. Right. But what you don't want to do is ever just use auto digitizing and just have the the software do all the 100 percent thinking for you. All right. So if you're doing some of the thinking half and half. All right. Then it's a good combination. All right. Uh, let me see. All right. So we got the, the bulk work of it. Right. We did the bulk, the heavy lifting already. All right, so now it's all about the details. Then we'll stitch this out. All right. All right, uh, Lejean run stitch gets you to another location without a jump stitch. I believe other stitches will fill on top of the run stitch. So yes, exactly, exactly. So um, since I'm, if I'm entering, if I'm enter, if I'm using my run stitch to enter a location, then yeah, that run stitch is gonna get covered by the actual stitches. So yes. All right. Um, all right. Appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's beautiful right now, right? So on 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 the software, okay, on the software, but it only matters if it's nice on the actual stitch, right? So we're about to stitch this out, okay? But I do want to give you. Let's go back to. Uh, let's go back to uh, here. All right. Um, let me go ahead real quick and just um, fix the GoPro. Uh, just real quick. Let me see. So now, now we did the three things that we talked about. All right. We 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 did our shape. We we traced our shapes. Okay. Which I think is the fun part. That's to me the easy part is tracing the tracing portion. It's kind of like the easy fun part. Uh, with practice, you tend to move quicker and faster. Um, and then, as you're as you're doing your uh, tracing, you're also adding your stitch angles, and you want to make sure your stitch angles actually line up, that they don't look kind of something doesn't look out of place. So the software it does a pretty good job of letting you see if something looks out of place. Okay, and of course it's not gonna. That's not how all your stitches are gonna look. Um, it's not gonna look 100% like the software, but you do have a good view of how it should look. Okay, so in theory, right, the software, your stitch out is gonna look like how it looks in the software. So in theory, it looks good. So as long as you're good there, um, you're kind of closer to what you're looking for. And then. Um, of course, to me, sequencing, it could be um, one of the more time consuming part, right? But you saw how as I was going, I was running, I was adding my run stitches. 
if you leave the run stitches for the very end, then it could it could add more time uh, to it. So I would suggest to do your run stitches as you're digitizing, and you know you know where to put your run stitches if you if you created a plan in the beginning. All right, all right. Let's see, let's see if I'm good here. All right, so now we just got to worry about our. Um, now we're gonna focus on our settings. All right, so underlays. We want to make sure our underlays are good to go. All right, back in action right here. All right, so what I want to do, I want, I just want everything to have a uh, center underlay. Okay. So object. Very important here. Uh, auto split. So I don't want auto split to be on. Okay. I want it to be off. Auto spacing. That's fine. 0.38 underlay. So I do have everything with a center run. Okay. Uh, but there are some specific ones. So like I know this one here, this specific one, if I pull out the ruler. It's gonna be one of the bigger sand stitches. So we're, we're like at nine millimeters, right? That's pretty big. By the time I put my un, uh, my my compensation, I'm gonna be at close to a 10, all right? So I'm at maximum level. So anytime I'm at maximum level type sand stitch, I want to include more underlay. So on these two, okay, on these two, actually this one too, this, this, this antler here, I'm going to add additional underlay. So I'm going to put center run. I'm going to put a uh, center runs fine and a edge run. Okay, and then usually edge runs, I like to put it at 50 just so it's not too close to the edge. Okay, so that put that edge run right here. Okay. Mm. And actually, I'm going to make this, instead of a center run, I'm going to make it a double zigzag. And since I put a, a, a good amount of underlay, I'm going to change their spacing to four, four oh millimeter. All right. So it didn't, it didn't affect our trims. Okay. So usually if you're doing any uh, changes, to your settings, always verify your trims because sometimes you do a, a specific change on the setting and it'll it'll change something around. All right, and then uh, the eyes. Okay, eyes, uh, star, H. Uh, I'll have it end in the middle or here. I'll have it start in the middle. So it could hide that that tie off or that tie in. Okay. H. Oh, what I do? Uh, stop here. Start in the middle. Okay. Bam. All right. That's just so I don't have any um any tie ins or tie offs in the corner, which could leave like little bumps. All right, I think we're good with setting wise. Uh, I have, okay, let's let's see it play out, okay? Uh, usually when you play it out, you could, you sometimes find little small details, issues, okay? So while it's playing out, let me check, see if there's any questions here. All right, say what? I run a machine, but have no clue the verbiage, the intricate parts of my job. I wish I knew more. That's why I follow you and others here on YouTube. Now I have to buy some. Yeah. So I, I like to mention the, some of the uh, vocabulary that we use for digitizing and embroidery. That way, if you ever have to, uh, if you ever have to explain something to a digitizer, okay, uh, everybody's using. Uh, the everybody's talking in the same right the same uh information and 
the information you're asking for is what they kind of used to hearing. Okay. Uh, yeah, just with practice, right? The more you practice, the, and once you got it, all right, it's quick. Like once you pick it up, it's it's pretty much quick. All right, the design looks so balanced. Yeah, I think it looks very good. So symmetric designs, right? So symmetric designs, we always, I like to uh, design it, making sure that I'm at the center and anytime possible, copy paste, right? On the other side, just so everything is uh, sharp and looking symmetric. All right, all right. All right, so let's go ahead, let's stitch this out. Okay, it looks like it's good, bam. I like to uh, digitize animals, right? Because you could you could give it uh, detailed. You could give it a like a detailed design, right? The more uh, the more you break it up, the more details you can give it. Okay, uh, I just try to stay away from the the plain fill stitches when it comes to animals. All right, yep, yeah, it looks good. All right, bam, let's go. I think we're good with questions. All right, so let's go ahead because I think I always say that you don't fully get the training until we until we actually stitch it out, right? Because this, in theory, looks good, right? In theory, it looks good. All right, all right, bam, bam, four, four, five, four. Four five four one. All right. This is the one that I that I just worked on. For I'm just trying to compare the stitches. Four five four. Three hundred four cuts. Three stops. Okay, different underlay on this one. Let me see. Underlay, double zigzag edge run. Yeah, same thing. All right, let me just verify the size. So we are at, if we select it, we are at three millimeters. Okay, ears, ears, bam, bam. All right. All right, and of course, Lejean. Lejean has a good question right here. I can't wait to download the practice design. Will it be available later as always? I, did. I, I am going to put it up for download so you could try it out. All right, uh, this is for educational purpose. So you can see and analyze and break it down and see kind of like how I, how I, um, how I trace the, the designs, the, the shapes that I did and everything. All right, so definitely will be available. And how many stitches did we end up with? All right, so let's check it out right here, right? So this design information tells us everything we have to know, right? So our final height, 2.93 inches, okay? Oh, I'm actually, for, oh, that's what I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the most important thing right now, which I'm gonna mention right now. All right, uh, width, 2.2, stitches, 4,500, all right? So that's my sweet spot. That's my sweet spot, 4,500. I like to be between four, and eight, maybe 10,000 stitches maximum, okay? Um, say what, where can we purchase? I'm just gonna put it down as a download, okay? And this, just a quick uh, morning warm up that we did this morning, all right? Just so you could kind of uh, follow along and, and kind of see all the settings that I have. All right, um, okay, let me, I, I almost forgot about the most important thing. Okay, push pull, right? I, I I told you that I was saving push pull for last, All right? So at this point right now, if we were to stitch this out, okay, notice that the green and the white, okay, there's not too much distance of overlap, okay? Let me go millimeters. This is uh, make or break information right here. All right, uh, point four, okay, which is uh, small amount, not too much, right? What this is, 0.43, the computer, it gives a, a default of 0.17 uh, 
0.17. So by the time you add that up and whatever overlap, little small overlap that I gave, okay, what I like to do, okay, just because we have a lot of pieces here kind of interacting with each other, um, instead of designing it, okay, and just to keep that straightness, right, to keep our, our design straight and sharp, I like to add it at the very end, this pool compensation. Okay. So here, pool comp. Okay. So most every every uh, every regular software, all right, has pool compensation. Something that is definitely we always have to practice on and get better at. Okay. What I like to do. Okay. Remove it. Okay. When it removes it, it just deselects all the running stitches because you don't need push pull on running stitches. All right. Then I click it black on. I, I click it back on. Okay. Instead of a 0.17, I'm going to over exaggerate because I haven't gave it any push pull, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna make up for not putting the compensation while I was designing. And the reason why I didn't put the I didn't compensate while I'm designing. So I could get as symmetric and as sharp points as possible. So by doing it here, everything is the push pull, everything is happening all symmetrically. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put 0.6. All right. It seems like a lot. Okay. It seems like a lot. And when I push enter right now, okay, you're going to kind of see it puff up a little, our design. Okay. So our design kind of puffed up a bit. Okay, but just know that these are all sand stitches. These are all stitches that are pulling in tight. Okay, that are pulling in tight. Okay, trims. Okay, so what I said, right? Every time we do a uh, setting and always look at our trims. So our trims moved up to point to six trims, right? So somebody didn't like that. So we got to figure out who didn't like that trim. Okay, here on the body, just real quick, H. I don't like to start on the corner, so I, I usually move it here. Um, and then real quick, we could put a, a underlay, global underlay. So we could start here, right? So I kind of started off today and I mentioned that I like to do a global underlay. That's just to get our stitches all together. That'll be our first stitch. Put that all the way up. All right, let me see who did not like that uh, that push pull. So up here, looks like up here, because up here I'm not supposed to have any cuts. So these are where my two cuts came from. Let me just push black closest joint. All right, still didn't like that. H, no, not that. Oh, I know what it is, H here. Sometimes you gotta find this, where this cut came from. No. All right, we gotta find this cut. It's right here. Oh wait, no, this is the final cut. H. Yeah, that's that's fine. This one's actually fine. It's this one here. Oh, I know where. So it's just putting an automatic cut right here. I'm just gonna put here on connectors, cut, trim after, I'm gonna put, put here. 
trim after off bam took that off okay sometimes you just gotta force it yeah i could make a running another running stitch they're so close to each other that i'm just gonna turn that off it's just gonna jump it right here okay and it did the same thing right here so turn this off trim after all right back to four all right so sometimes you just got to play detective and look for these cuts that just came up. All right. So we're good to go here. Okay. Bam. All right. Let me see if we got any questions. Uh, okay. I think we're good. All right. And then Jean says, practice, practice, practice. Learning so much. I love that all from our class from day one to current. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's always good. I, I like to go back to and, and watch and listen to some of the videos um, just so each video, right, can get better and better and better and better. And I'm pretty sure by the time we get towards the end, right, of the year, all right, we're going to have the world's best classes, right, especially with the help of everybody in the chat, right? You make the class a whole lot better because you get everybody's asking very good questions and you're helping out people that are watching it on the replay. Okay, who don't have a chance to ask questions. So by you asking very good questions, all right, helps everybody out too. All right. All right, let's go ahead. Let's stitch this out. Okay. Let me let me grab the iPhone here. Give me one second. Let me see. Um all right, let me make some adjustments real quick. I don't know if it's too dark on this side. I might have to throw a light. All right. All right, let me just change camera angles. I think we're good with the iPhone there. All right. Give me one sec. All right. Oh, real quick. Let me just show you right here. Ooh. So real quick, I have a uh, a sample of this polo shirt that I got right here. All right, I just cut it up. This is like the backside of the polo shirt. This is from a Port Authority. So. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to course use two pieces of cutaway anytime I'm working with polo shirts okay of course mighty hoops All right makes life a whole lot easy all right of course you want your Backing nice and clean. Okay, good to go. All right, let's go ahead. So I got this file ready to go right here. Uh, Get you a good angle. All right. Uh, all right. Okay, let me verify my colors. Eight three eight. All right. I'm using my cell phone, so I can't really zoom in. Let me see. It doesn't let me zoom in right here. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. It's all good. All right. Let's go. So it's going to start with uh, global underlay first. Yep. Okay. It's going to be like a light, the light, light color. So you might not see it. Okay. All right, this is the light side of the video, so. Oh, let me see how it looks on the computer. All right, uh, while we're watching this, very good question, right? Very popular question. Ricoma or uh, Z, ZSK machine is what I'm taking this question as, right? So always good topic, right, to talk about Ricoma or ZSK. Uh, of course, right, Z, ZSK. Oh, let me push start. Of course, ZSK, right, best of the best. If you got the money to, to buy a ZSK, then, right, just like with everything in the world. If money's not an issue, okay, you always want to get the best of the best. Um, I got a Ricoma. It does what it 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 does what I what I started embroidery for. So hats, okay, it does a good job with hats. Uh, of course, there's always there's always uh, stronger, faster, just anything, right? Anything in life, there's always better, faster, stronger, okay? So it all depends uh, what your financial situation is, right? That's, that'll just be a game day decision, game time decision that you're gonna have to make, right? All right, my cutaway, uh, this one here, uh, I wanna say it's the three ounce. Yeah, the the C it's it's from Allstitch, right? The Allstitch one, C zero three zero, eight by eight. So I, I do want to say it's a three ounce, but you could confirm that if you go to Allstitch, C Charlie zero three zero. That's I I use two pieces of cutaway. All right, so right now, anytime I'm looking at um. I'm looking at the sample uh, stitch out. I'm always looking out for making sure overlaps did their job and they overlapped. Okay, that's, I'm making sure that the sand stitches are all pointing at the correct location. Okay, because sometimes you might, you might uh, have skipped uh, a certain angle and you missed something. Okay, so that's where you want to catch it. Uh, but the big thing is, yeah, the big thing is you want to catch um, overlapping, okay? Because I will tell you that if I ever have to go back and fix a design, most likely it's because something didn't overlap something. That's probably the number one issue that I would have when digitizing is catching an overlap. Because sometimes you don't want to shoot too far on the overlap, but sometimes you have to. Okay, sometimes you have to. So here, right, we had uh, we had a lot of moving pieces, a lot of objects on top of objects. So the safe number, right? I would say that's probably the maximum that you should probably use is a, is a uh, compensation of 0.6, okay? But here, now we're starting to see, right? We're starting to see, right? So here, let me just verify that everything Yeah, so everything is overlapped. And you could always play with the compensation. 
So even even if uh, if you download this file, you could play around with the compensation. You saw you saw how I did it, how I changed it for 0.6. But you could you could see where the sweet spot is, because sometimes maybe a 0.4 or 0.5 compensation might be a sweet spot. All right. So here uh, we set up all of our um, our antlers. So there's no unnecessary cuts. As long as the equipment's running, okay, the the chances of something happening is is, is low. All right. As soon as you introduce cuts, the possibility of something happening starts going up. All right. So let's see if I could go full screen right here. Right. Hold on. Let me throw some lights here. All right, uh, Jelaine, uh, compensation, does the compensation extend the size of each? Yes, it does. Okay, yes, it does. Uh, here, our antlers, I, I like it here with our antlers because it gives it, it gives it a little bit more, uh, boldness. If we don't, maybe the design would have included it pretty thin. Okay, so that's something to take into account. There are some designs where you only want one side to be compensated. In that situation, you wouldn't use uh, you wouldn't use the the push pull to do all your compensation. Okay, so very good question. All right, so yes, it does it does do both sides. If you only need one side, uh, then you then you're going to have to uh, digitize it or trace it so that. So that specific side does the does the compensation for it. All right. So that's a good observation there. Then here it's going to do the main the main antler. That's right. That's going to be that's going to be showing. So I put a zigzag. Double zigzag uh, edge run, right? Underlay. Just to give it that nice bold look. And then I took away the density from 38 and I moved it to 40. And then I'm gonna actually let me switch out this camera. We're gonna zoom in with this camera here, with the Sony here, so we could see all the details. So right now I know you can't see the details 100%, but we're gonna put it under the lights, under the bright lights, and analyze it here. Because no matter what, every every uh, digitized file, it's always under construction. I wouldn't say there's ever a design that's 100% perfect, right? Even if you're changing from garment to garment, you might have to make some adjustments to your designs. All right, now let's just add the eyes.
All right, done. It just left one little tail right here. Where I might as well just take care of that right now. All right, let's go ahead. Let me um, turn on the Sony here. Give me one sec. All right, I'll turn on this light. And all right, let's go here to the drawing board. Let me pull up our design. Just zoom in. Let me just cut that um, stitch that was hanging out. I should have just cut it out here because I didn't have a good angle there. All right, good. It's a little dark, hold on. Let me bring this light a little down. A couple of things that I want you to see. You know if the green's a little dark. Hold on, let me see if I could change the ISO. I won't do nothing. All right, I think we're good. Hold on. So you see the horns come out pretty good. Everything looks symmetric. Okay. Main thing we want to check out here is that we our overlap, everything overlapped. Okay. But it's looking sharp. I'm going to try it out on a hat later today. See how it looks. It should be good for a hat. I think we're good. Let me know what y'all think. All right. It looks pretty dark on the screen here. Okay. I can see like all the details real good. Bring in some black. See. All right. I think it looks real good right there. See. Yep. Uh, one thing about this, since we're using long stitches, okay, since here our sad stitches are pretty long, you want to make sure, right, this is always important here, 
you always run an eye test and you make sure that your tensions are good to go. All right. So as you can see here, all right, my tensions are real good here. Get these out. All right. So anytime you're running long stitches, all right, in order for them not to be uh, loose. Okay. So here. All right, we're looking real good. Both colors were looking good. So that's why our, our, our stitches are nice and tight right here. Okay, so very important. All right, so let me see if we have any questions. Okay, I think it was a very good training today. All right, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, All right, Jelaine looks great. Have a great weekend, Arlington, Texas. All right, all right. Appreciate that. Appreciate for uh, stopping by and everything. All right, all right. I think we're good. All right, uh, just make sure this computer is good. All right, uh, so very good day of training, right? So we did, uh, We talked about our game plan, right? Always have a game plan. Anytime you're going to digitize, especially something with a lot of moving pieces. So here we had how many objects? 37 objects, okay? That means there was 37 shapes that we did, okay? So anytime we're doing 37 shapes, 37 objects, you yeah. have to have a game plan. What's gonna go first? What's gonna go second? When are you going to uh, change colors? Okay, uh, little small details that at the at the long run, right? At the long run, here we only had four. We only had to do four color, uh, four cuts. Okay, that's all because we planned ahead of time. Okay, uh, one thing that uh, here moving forward, I want to kind of uh, kind of focus on the digitizing part. Okay, because uh, I think uh, without digitizing, with without digitizing pretty much you cannot move forward in um, in creating a lot of designs all right that way if something does go if something does go right if something does go wrong something's not looking good you know that you can start with the digitizing and start troubleshooting from there right because sometimes people are troubleshooting uh, and they go straight to the machine right they're, they're gonna blame the machine okay but sometimes you got to take two steps back and start from the initial part which is the digitizing. Right after you after you see that the digitizing is good, now you move to the hooping, then you move to the equipment, to the settings, and everything else. All right, all right. So if you're here on the replay, okay, uh, leave any of your questions down below in the comments. All right, uh, make sure if you're here now, uh, hit a like, hit hit that like button. All right, uh, let YouTube know that we are here every Saturday. Okay, let your friends know that we're here every Saturday. Okay, and telling you every week okay we're just gonna level up the level of difficulty we're just gonna keep on rising it rising and rising it that way by the end of this year okay we are all going to be experts at our craft all right so of course the way we become expert is by practice trial and error okay uh experimenting and making adjustments and writing down our adjustments and kind of uh working building on top of all of our experience and sharing that experience all right sharing that experience so i do appreciate everybody on the chat that 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 puts in their two cents and helps out the whole fellow uh embroidery community all right so i do appreciate that so everybody all right uh william good morning all right and then um barb great training today so much thanks so much from north central minnesota all right everybody have a good weekend okay Jesse, all right, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate that. All right, another Fort Worth, Texas. All right, Linda, great training. All right, and then if you have any ideas of any other uh, episodes, right, any ideas of what, what we should tackle or what we should focus, all right, as you can see, any type of training, I like to zoom in and look at all the who, what, where, when, why, how, and everything that goes with it. All right, all right, stay unique. Appreciate that, all right. And 
Diablo 7. All right. All right. So thank you for stopping by. See you. See everybody. See you all next week. Same time. 8 a.m. Central. 6 a.m. Pacific. 9 a.m. Eastern. All right. Thank you very much. See you next week. Peace. Out.